Hey, this shit crazy, man. First off, that's a lot y'all don't know about me. Y'all gonna find out. I'm like really gonna open up to the public just because I'm humane, so I don't get no fuck. I'm gonna let you know what you wanna know, I'm let you know what you don't wanna know. Because this shit is real. And one day, you knowing at the top of my success, this is always gonna be the pinnacle of it. I'm gonna folks to know that you can still accomplish things while you're going through adversity. But it's a lot of fucking shit going on. Y'all gonna get the good part of it. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey, it's the B. Like, my, my plan was to push it as long as I could push that shit. Like, I I'm said. A, I'm, I don't want to be like everybody else dropping a mixtape, getting a little buzz. Before you know it, two, three months later, you dropping another. Wait, you just, you ain't even see what you can do with this one yet. You ain't even see if you can get on or get signed or get to the radio or nothing. That's just, that's to me, that's a waste of music. How everybody just be dropping shit, loading shit up, and then moving on to the next. It's a difference between being consistent. Yeah, like I see like Cam, he do that. And um, my, my, my nigga Lucky used to do that shit a lot. He'd drop a mixtape and then before you know it, two, three months later, or two months later, he'd drop another one. And he'd be like, wait a minute, you ain't even push this one, Hope You gotta put into it and push it. You gotta make yourself seem like you're already in the industry. You can't always, oh, well, I ain't on yet, so I gotta scratch and snarl. You could come from that angle, but then you still gotta be confident enough to do research and then make it seem like you're already in the industry. These past six months, we've been doing these shows, and, and since I've been going out to the clubs and all that, like in my mind frame, I feel like I'm already on. I go in that humble and as a starving artist trying to get on, but then at the same time, I, I place myself to think if I'm already on, how would I carry myself? How would I act? How would I act to the DJs and the promoters? How would I act to my, my crowd? How would I act to my, my artist mates, or to my label mates? How's my performance gonna be? So I carry myself like that. And in my mind, I feel like I'm in the industry. I treat this shit like we already in there. So, you know, when I'm in the club, I'm thinking, okay, we know them. Let's rock this bitch, get back to the lab, make more heat. You know what I'm saying? Get that shit nice and massive, and put it together, get out there and get to the people. It took a lot of weed, liquor, and, and electricity, you know what I'm saying, to make these 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 songs. And then before you know it, these songs are not even cherished and remembered or even pushed. Like you could bring a song out right now, somebody be like, that shit hot, that shit hot, right, it's hot. Then they say it again the next week. Smoke blunt with you to it in the car. But then like a week after that, do they still remember it? Do they give a fuck about it? And then are you still putting it in their face? Are you still putting it out there around their ears for them to still be for it to still be relevant to them, nah, it, it goes to waste. And that used to scare me, like, what if I put my heart and soul into like 13 tracks and motherfuckers didn't accept it? And it'd be the same thing as me putting my heart and soul in a double CD that it could buy to 26 tracks. I feel like that way I can't fail. Oh, you don't like this, I got something else. You don't like that, I got something else. You don't like that, I got something else. You don't like that, I got something else. They gonna stop. Pretty soon you gonna like something and then it's gonna go back to that project. This is where it came from. You're gonna accept the project, got no choice. And I feel like confidently like outside my city, you know what I'm saying? I know that my project can be accepted. Like I really feel like that. If I went to any other label, any other venue and displayed my project, you know what I'm saying, it'll open up big doors for me, you know what I'm saying? So until I get there, of course I gotta run with my city. And I think I'm doing a good job. I'm in one of the hottest clubs in the city and I'm getting known. I got tracks that's been getting played on the radio consistently, two songs, two singles. Uh like man, it's just And then there's adversity going on too, so I'm trying to make sure I, I don't get caught up in the negativity and still try to push this shit. This shit, this is a long premeditated plan, man. Like, I was sitting on the bench watching everybody do their shit. And I was proud, and then at the same time, I was a little upset because I was like, damn, I should have did this a certain way. I can't wait till I get my time. I'm going to sit patient and get my shot, and then I'm going to do it the way I planned it out, and hopefully I'll be successful with my plot. So far, it's looking like it's working because everything I plotted and planned to do shit has been, has been in rotation. I put the album together, I took my time on it. I dubbed the, the songs that I wanted to make videos for. I wrote songs that I knew I wanted features on, and everything been flowing. And everything I've been doing in the club has been heavily accepted. I'm not doing nothing that somebody put into the tab was like, this ain't like your other song, come back with this. Like, no, everything I did was accepted. So I let the crowd choose which song was going to be the favorite. That's why, if you notice, when I started doing my shows, I was doing a different song every week. And the crowd just reacted to, to No Ducking, like, really, really really enthusiastic and more powerful than they react to everything else. Like, they react to goods, everything. The DJs react to goods, everything. But something about no ducking, they just, they took, they accepted that more. So I was like, okay, then let me stick with this for a little second. Let me keep pushing this. The more I push it, the more it got hotter. My folks requested for it to be on the radio and then shit. And we like that for love. Like, that's that's my idea for the I Am Dane project. Like, due to my age base, I feel like it's just a dying art. Like, people, I feel like they don't care about their talent that much, but they just, they found a way to milk the game. I mean, it's a business, we need revenue, but it's just like you cheating the art of the music. Like, you know, I'm just gonna drop 10 songs or 11 songs, and half the songs is gonna be a hook and a verse, and 
It's like you cheating. You know what I'm saying? It's like then the more people doing that, the more they're changing our perception of how we how we perceive the music. Like, like I rock with my nigga, my, my nigga ill. Like my nigga ill tell me like he more accustomed to short songs. Like that's just his style. Like he don't hate on nobody who make long songs. He don't hate on two verse songs. He don't hate on people who do three verse songs. But his thing is he likes short songs. I bet you if you didn't hear a lot of short songs, that probably would have been influenced. You probably like just he probably just get a creativity to be like, okay, I'm gonna make short songs, that's my style. Like, I came from probably listening to to long songs and people not putting enough energy or enough creativity in it and then it don't catch your attention. So now that art dying now. So now you gotta settle for what they done changed the game up to. Okay, we're gonna give you a hook and a verse, and I'm gonna give you like eleven tracks like this. Just like here I am, a little older than the generation right now, and I'm like, that's a waste of art though. Before you know it, the rap and the music itself going to be come down to just probably just a hook. Let me break out a fact real quick. I don't think people notice the designer song. Everybody listens to that panda, and the only thing they think about is he stole Future Flow. I think people miss the key message in that song. He dropped a verse and a hook, and that was it. He made the hook long enough to the point where nobody noticed he just spit a regular 16. Then he came back with the hook, and that was the end of the song. So you mean to tell me that's what the game has changed to? Like just a hook, a verse, and a hook? And I'm not knocking that, but I'm from a different era. They asked me, like, what is one of the things, what is one of the positive things or the best things that happened that made me feel like it was worth doing the music? The times, all the negative things that came with it. Every time somebody finessed me, every time I put in some work and nobody respected it, every time I try to play a song, my motherfuckers will talk through it, every time I try to play a song, somebody rap through it, that would motivate me. Because every time something like that happened, I would go back to the drawing board and re-edit it and rebuild it and come back twice as hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was self-motivation. If everything was always accepted, then before you know it, I wouldn't be humble and evil to learn. I'd just be cocky and think I know it all. I would be a difficult person to work with. Like, now, what made me want to keep doing it, you know what I'm saying? The success I was getting out of it was just knowing that it was tough and I was able to overcome my adversities. You know what I'm saying? Then it make it easy to appreciate getting to these clubs and getting on the radio, you know what I'm saying? Anybody would answer that question and be like, oh, it was either getting on the radio or that time I rocked the show and everybody was with it. No, it was the struggle that, that led up to me getting to that because without the struggle, that wouldn't exist. Not to be cliche, but the worst thing that happened in my music life was extending my hands to so many people and helping them and, and, and building and supporting them and then watching them just abandon me, period. Like, that was real hard. And, I, and to this day, like at the age I'm at right now, I'm still like extremely bitter about that because like it's a lot of people right now and I'm, and I'm just being fair, there's a lot of people right now who, who, who should pay homage to me for the talent that they got. There's a lot of people right now that I taught them how to make music, I taught them how to rap. I spent hours and seconds and days, months and years with them working on their craft. I spent hella money taking people to the studio trying to perfect their craft. And when I looked up, I never got shout outs, I never got invited to no videos and no studio sessions. And I sit back and be like, if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't even know how to do this. And whatever fame or whatever happiness you get or whatever revenue you get off this, like you wouldn't even be getting that if it wasn't for me. So that was like one of the main things that hurt me doing this music shit. The second thing that hurt me doing the music shit is fake success. This is this is my my contra contradicted answer to the other question you asked me about what was the most what was the most painful shit, you know. The fake success. When somebody like this song cold or somebody like Jesus album hot, you I'ma fuck with it, and then like you never hear nothing else about it, like that's painful. Cause when you like something, you consistently fucks with it. Like I like to smoke weed, I smoke weed every day. I like to get ass, I try to get ass as much as I can. I like raising my kids, I do it all the time. I like to work, I always try to keep a job. I like to clean up my house. When you like something, you know what I'm saying, it's consistent. You stay fucking with it, it's the flow of it. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the biggest things I can't stand. It hurt, it hurt like a motherfucker when I make a track and somebody fell in that shit right then and there. But then later on, you don't know nothing about it. Or I cut it on and don't get that same vibe. Like that sucks. Like that, that sucks. Or you do a show my foot's like, gee, you killed it, you killed it. Like, do you really feel like that? Or that's because you're just supposed to do that out of sportsmanship. Like, I don't, I don't like fake success. I want success to be real. I want a motherfucker to be like, gee, that shit was hot. And then the next day they see me, they still tell me that that past shit was hot. They still support it in the present. They still fuck with it in the future. Like, like I'd rather have it like that. I gave myself a name, Ace, because when I was growing up, I didn't have a nickname. Everybody had nicknames. And I played sports. I played every damn sports team in my high school. So I nicknamed myself Ace now. And I try to help have it grow on to people. Nobody wasn't accepting it yet. When I started rapping in high school, motherfuckers started accepting it. When Paid and Fool came out, for some strange reason, everybody on my block and in my hood, my part of the hood, started calling me Boogie. You know? So then before you know it, I, I, I kind of dropped the Kid Ace thing. Because, like, 
the kid thing was hot as hell. Kid this, kid that. I kind of like dropped the kid ace thing, and then it was like, okay, I'm ace boogie. I tried to put it all together, the kid ace boogie. But it was like, all right, I dropped it. And then before you know it, like, I looked up and there was a million ace boogies in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, man, how could I probably unique it and abbreviate it? So I kept trying to find ways, you know what I'm saying? And then my nigga Lucky, when we used to go to the studio, every time he used to see me, he used to always shout out like, hey, boog! And for some strange reason, they used to give me geek. Like, I swear to God, I cannot make this shit up. He'd see me across the street. We both would go to the same studio. He'd go get some blunts. He'd pee me, be like, hey, boog! And then before I knew it, I was just like, man, that's hot. It, the way I reacted to that, I'm like, man, I, I wish everybody called me. If I was in the industry and everybody was like, hey, boog, and I looked up and got on charge and shit, I could perceive whatever image I'm trying to get out there. So, it was hard, because my name is Ace Boogie, but like, it's like, I'll drop it. Ace Boogie sounded a lot better. It felt better. Stronger, you know what I'm saying? You know, they sit, fit me. It's unique, it's different. Very unique to me. It don't matter if it's another A Book in Chicago. Me being A Book is more unique than I feel like anybody else. You know what I'm saying? And shit. I got a lot of people that can vouch for that now. If you look at the motherfuckers I do shows and do music with, like motherfuckers fuck with A Book. It's like a, it's a call. You know what I'm saying? It's a A Book. Well, um, all I can say is uh, I'm gonna aggravate the fuck out of y'all the best way I can. I'm gonna do it on purpose. I wanna be on. Um, Every social media, I want to be on every TV show, I want to be at every venue, every radio station. And until I can get there to where y'all accepted me, automatically, and I'm going to keep on flooding timelines. I have consistent shows that pop up. If it was up to me, you know what I'm saying, I would do shows every fucking week because I have shows lined up every week. Club, Missouri, Red Diamond, you name it. I got venues coming up. Um, shout out to Go Boys. They're throwing me out on release party on September 28th on Wednesday at Club, Missouri, beat up. Um, Sean is supposed to be opening up, helping me promote the shit. That's what I'm told, and I know, you know what I'm saying, that my people's a man of their word. That's a blessing. And then, you know, the Cassidy joint coming up October 2nd. Bodil coming up Wednesday, uh, September the 14th. And then I'm in this $1,000 competition where I actually made it to the final round at Red Diamond. And that's a big thing. I'm in the final round. It's like five of us in the final round. I started out with 40 people, and it's down to five. You know what I'm saying? So I'm blessed to even do that. Got that coming up. I just dropped the mixtape, I Am Dang, double CD. It's full of hot shit, go check it out. Couple features for my gold member niggas. Got my nigga ill all over the motherfucking CD. I'm gonna be pushing that motherfucker forever. I'm gonna keep doing these shows. I have a lot of venue videos that's finna drop. That's what you keep expecting from me, y'all. Just consistency. You gonna keep hearing my name, keep seeing my face, keep seeing my team. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's what you can expect. Expect to keep seeing a bug. Damo City representative, 069, 500 affiliated, gold member motherfucker. And, and, and to, to the point where you're sick of it, then you're sick of it, I'm just going to shove it down your mouth a little bit more. That's how I want, because that's how, I, that's how I became a fan of music. I seen shit every day, heard it every day. Sometimes I ain't like shit, sometimes I was secretly dislike it. And then before you know it, that word consistency just won me over. I'm like, it's there. It's on every commercial, every radio station, every person's CD deck, every person's MP3 player. It's there for a reason. Somebody bust their ass to put it there. So I just want to be just like that. Because I belong, though. I don't know if a lot of people really feel like that. Like, I want to make it and get in it because I know I belong. Like, I know I belong in the industry. I make good damn music. Like, I can write R&B. I can write pop. I can write rap. I can write poetry. Like, I belong. It's too much talent, you know what I'm saying, to be local. It's too much talent to not get revenue off of it, man. Only if you can relate. <laughs> Love. I don't get you, guilty conscience, you're so vengeful <laughs> Look what I've been through, hope for better days, I'm so wishful It make it hard for the beat to forget you It bring drama to my life, it's starting to stick to <laughs> You starting to trip too, punishing the beat cause I ain't with you It never made sense, even when I'm broken down, it never made sense